Has this ever happened to you? Oh, man. Not again! Introducing the ideal 30-222 or Model 22. This is the ideal 30-222, or as you can see here, ideal number 22. As you saw in my little demonstration, these do come in handy, but these are more made for areas with a lot of vibration, like a motor or other environment where you're going to have to kind of secure your wires a little bit better or your conductors, however you want to say it, compared to, say, a wire nut. As far as size comparison goes, here's a red wire nut from Ideal. They're roughly the same size, roughly. Of course, the red wire nut's a little taller. And the Ideal 30-222 is, of course, a little bigger in, in uh, diameter there. As far as a tan, they are, uh, they're, the tans are still a little bit taller. And of course, the number 22 here is larger in circumference or diameter as well, because of course it has to have this brass set screw fitting inside there. There are a few different sizes of these. This particular model here, you can put two number 10 wires or three number 12s, or I believe three number 14s. It could be four number 14s. I'd have to go back and look. But uh, I don't know. I think they're kind of cool in kind of an old school sense. They still make these. You can still buy these. I just really haven't ran into a place where I really need them. Plus, they're about a buck 40 a piece, I think I saw online. So a dollar 40 a piece, say a dollar 50 a piece compared to these guys. I don't know how much these cost off the top of the head, but I know they're got to be cheaper than doing this. So if you're ever looking for something that you need a little bit more security, I would go with something like this. What's also nice, well, they say this in the um, documentation for these, this wire connector, is that you can go ahead and you can inspect the wiring easier than you can inspect the wiring with a, a wire nut. I'm not sure in what situation you would want to inspect the wiring, but I guess if you got a hair up your ass and you're like, hey, is that thing still connected? You can just unscrew this and look to see if the set screw is still pushing against the conductors or not. But I don't really see a need for that. I don't know why they put that in their, in their, uh, their text information on this wire connector, but they did. Uh, it says uh, you can use these so you don't have to restrip the wires. I also don't get that as well. If I needed to really find out if a wire, if a splice was connected, A, there would be other indicators the splice has failed, either just because the downstream component or device or whatever wasn't working, or it can usually see if a wire is pulled out, it'll be loose, or you can see the fact that there's a conductor hanging out so I, I don't understand it. What I do want to know in the description, if you electricians out there have ever used these before and what environments do you use them? It's nice because they make this little thing here, this little tool for the different sizes. There's a, one for the smaller size and one for this size where you can have a little window there. You can stick your conductors in there and you can tighten it down. 
But I did notice if you put this in here and then you run your, your uh, conductors through, in fact, let me show you that real quick. Make sure that's open and clear enough to get three of them in there. And then put those in there and then shove these into here. Uh, come on, get in there. Maybe that need to back that off a little bit. Let's see, let's square them up on the end here. And then we'll shove them in here. If you just do that, and then you screw them down, and you pull them out, you'll see that one's a little bit further out than the rest, and the wire, the protective cap, won't really, won't really go on there because this one is holding it out. So I think efficiency wise, you would just have to take more time to, time to use these or to install these. And personally, I don't want to have to line everything up, which you do with, with a wire nut anyway. You do have to line them up with a wire nut. But then you have to make sure that everything is nicely lined up and not going past, maybe a tiny bit past the, uh, the threads here. And then you can tighten it down a little bit to get them secure. And then if you really want to put some more torque on them, then you got to, oh, see, I put it in backwards. So that's the other thing I ran into too. You have to pay attention to make sure the threads are going a certain direction. So if I'm doing a bunch of wiring, what I don't want to do is have to spend this much freaking time putting you know, making up a box or something. Like I said, in a motor, maybe. But even in our, in our motors, we use different types of splices. You know, I mean, sure, that looks very clean and secure. The brass set screw fitting is, how far is that in there? Probably a good half inch down inside the nut. You know, I mean, that fits really nice and it, it works well. I guess... If, if you wanted to, yeah, you could back that off and you can go, oh, hey, okay, yeah, it looks good. You could recheck it, maybe kind of retorque it. Okay, yeah, that looks great. And then put that back on, but I don't know. Once again, what do you guys think about the ideal number 22? Do you use them or not? Questions, comments, concerns? Leave them in the comments and like and subscribe if you like this kind of goofy stuff. We'll see you next time.